Welcome back to Kojiko News. I'm pleased to be joined by Chantelle Valorant, the Executive Director of Drug Free Kids Canada. Chantelle, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's start off with what exactly is Drugs Free Canada? So Drug Free Kids Canada is a charity. It's a nonprofit organization that educate um, and empowers parents parents with a capital P, so families to have informed discussion around substance use to prevent problematic substance use with youth. Substance abuse um, seems to be a huge problem these days and it seems to be getting out of control. How can parents talk to their kids about this sort of problem? It's about starting, um, starting at an early age and having ongoing open dialogue about it. A dialogue that comes with um, curiosity and um, start like trying to be not judgmental about it. It's hard as a parent. I'm a, also a parent of two teenagers, so I understand um, how we can be sometimes a daunting thing. And that's why we encourage parents to come on our website um, you know, come to some of our workshops to be able to have the tools to have those conversations and not feel intimidated about it. Now, opioids also seem to be affecting Northern Ontario a bit more than some of the other places. Why do you think that is? Accessibility, um, you know, as well as maybe um, for experimentation for youth, maybe the, some of the myth of thinking that because it's a prescription pill, um, that it's maybe safer. So being able to dismiss, like talk about this myth, talk about kids, why are they feeling this way? And you know, as simple as looking into your own medicine cabinet at home and cleaning up whatever you're not using and returning it to the pharmacy and safely storing what you are using. Because at the end of the day, when we're asking kids, you know, the kids that have used um, prescription pills to get high, where do they get this? 55% um, of them are saying that they got it from home. Now, I just want to touch on a, a small uh, stat there that one fourth of kids aged 16 to 24 reach out for mental health or have reported that they have issues, but three fourths of them don't have access to the resources that you listed. How can kids possibly overcome some of this with maybe dealing with their mental health? It's hard. There is a correlation between mental health and substance use, problematic substance use. Unfortunately, some kids feel that that's their only coping mechanism that they can turn to. Again, it's a matter of being able to speak to a family member or to somebody that they trust to be able to um, identify some of mental health issues, some anxiety that they may be feeling. Coming out of COVID, we see a lot of kids that unfortunately are feeling more anxious um, to be in social setting, to return into the normalcy of going to school on a regular basis. So being able to talk about those feelings, um, being able to talk about healthy mechanism. But at the end of the day, if parents are feeling overwhelmed, we always encourage them that the first gateway is to talk to their doctor, to talk to their pediatrician. Um, these people can help, uh, you know, provide some resources to be able to help. Um, they're a, a, a great gateway. Parents can also come on our website. We have a, a 24 hour, seven days a week chat that they can uh, feel secure to feel, to talk to uh, a social worker, a trained social worker who can help them. We also have a direct phone line. We're really, really encouraging parents at the end of the day, if they're seeing some symptoms of their kids that are more anxious than usual, um, more withdrawn, um, create, there's a lot of risk factors that they can see and some of the signs of you know mental health issues before it becomes a problem, before kids turn to substance uh, problem except substance use, we, you know, parents should seek out and get support. Chantel, thank you for joining me today in discussing this topic. Thank you for having me.